I just want to start, obviously, you were linked to that fight with Sergio Pettis, but then he obviously left for Bellator. Were you kind of disappointed you didn't get that fight? Uh, yeah, uh, it would have been a good name to take out, but, you know, the, these things happen all the time, so I, I wasn't too, too, um, yeah, too fast after it. Um, I'm still on the same card, still fighting a big name, Brandon Moreno, you know, he's been around. Um, headline the Mexico card with Sergio, so um, no, I'm just glad to be on the same card as um, with Alex, my teammate, and um, put on a show for the American fans, my first proper fight in America, so um, yeah, can't wait to put on a show. Were you surprised you weren't on that 234 card, or was that a bit too soon after your last fight? <coughs> um, well, after my fight in China, Dana White was at, the, at, at my fight, um, and he came up to me after the fight, and he, he said, you know, congrats, good job. And then I asked asked him there, I was like, you know, hey, can I, um, what's the chances of me getting on that uh, Melbourne card? It was about five-week turnaround, and he, he pretty much said to me, um, here's my number, text me to remind me, I'll do all I can to get you on there. So um, it was looking likely, and then the card was filling up, and then the last fight to be announced was my teammate's fight. And then... After he got announced, I didn't want to push in case, you know, something happened and then he didn't get his chance. So I just waited. I, I, my coach is um, Eugene, you know, he, he looks after six of us now in the UFC and he just said, let's just wait till um, till Vegas when Al um, Alexander Volkanovsky is fighting and we'll push for that. So it just kind of worked out. And yeah, I, I was happy with the, with the decision. I got still got to go to Melbourne and support the boys and, and witness the um, is Israel winning the middleweight title. So, um, yeah, no, I was still happy with the, the outcome. What was that light night like for you, seeing Brad win, seeing Dan Hooker win, then topping it off with Israel become the champion? Like, was it nerves going into that? Then after that, that was just pure excitement? Yeah, like, I, I, I'd been training with these guys um, for, for a long time now, and then obviously just been coming off my camp and then helping, out, helping them out for their camp. Uh, I'd seen all the work being put in, and um, uh, come fight day, um, I, I was just one hundred percent. I had one hundred percent confidence in my in my teammates coming through on their wins. And just you know, when it comes down to these big fights, it's not it's nothing that our coaches and our um, our teammates haven't been um, in before. So you know that they, I guess, get, that's what gives us reassurance come fight night, knowing that. Um, We've been in these big money fights and these um, big occasions, so it doesn't really phase us. So when I was there, it was crazy to be in that stadium, 57,000 people, um, pretty much um, our second hometown um, uh, being Melbourne. Uh, yeah, it was an amazing fight um, Fight night, seeing Brad get fired the night, and then Dan getting a massive win against Ella Quinta. Um, and then Izzy's walkout to the you know, the hype around that fight um, to the outcome, you know, stopping him in the second round. Um, yeah, it was fairy tale. Um, it was in a fairy tale event. And I, I called it, you know, everyone keep asking, you know, what, what what's your prediction for that Whitaker Israel fight? And I said, this is what Izzy says, slow cook him in the first, fry him in the second. And then that's exactly what happened. With this one too, do you like having Alex on the card so there's someone familiar with you guys can travel together and fight on this card together? Yeah, definitely. It's not just about the travel, it's about the build-up to the fight. So we're in camp right now um, at the same gym at City Kickboxing, so we can push each other. I, I, I know um, if I can keep off Alex and, and you know, get, um, get the better of him sometimes, then I'm doing something right because, you know, he's one of the best in the world, future featherweight champ. Um, his top game is, you know, world class and, and his striking is um, just as good. So, yeah, we've, we've got uh, all the different looks at our gym that we can pick and choose from, which makes it quite unique. Um, and it's so far away from everything. So um, we keep we not, we like to keep the circle quite small and, and intimate. And um, that makes us dangerous because, you know, we weren't on anyone's radar um, a few years ago. But now, you know, we're, we're um, I think, 10 and on the UFC this year. Um, just about to make get our second world title for our gym, and you know who knows next year we could have a few more. Yeah, Eugene's got to be coach of the year this year. Like that gym, like no one knew anything about that gym. Like because I'm from Canada, no one in North America knew anything about that gym until the past like two, three years, really. Yeah, exactly. It's it's been um, 
it's been a fast rise, but for us, you know, we've, we've been talking about this for a, for a little while. And, you know, New Zealand's always been a, um, a big uh, combat um, country, you know, sport country, um, coming from boxing with the likes of David Tua um, and Joseph Parker, and then with kickboxing with Ray Sefo and, and uh, one of our striking coaches, Doug Viney. Um, you know, we've got a lot of high-level elite um, combat athletes, so... Um, now you just kind of seen the, um, I guess the resurge of uh, of that movement with um, city kickboxing doing what it's doing now, and um, that's just full credit to our coaches Eugene and and, and Doug, um, and then the coaching staff they've brought along as well. Um, yeah, it's I, I would definitely not be where I am today um, without their help and without their uh, guidance. So, yeah. Obviously, with Moreno, he's a tough guy. Been in the UFC, got caught, that he was the LFA champ, got brought back. You've had success in the UFC as well. Your last fight was really impressive. Like, how do you see this fight playing out? Because you guys are both, like, evenly matched here. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a good fight. Like, I'm expecting Brandon to come out and swinging, uh, bringing everything on the um, that he has to the table. And um, I, I've prepared myself for, you know, what, the hardest fight of my career so far. Um, and... Um, city kickboxing's, you know, been a, a great addition um, to get me ready for the for these occasions. Fighting in Vegas, you know, that's the fight capital of the world. Being on such a star-stacked um, card with three title fights, um, it's kind of my breakout fight to kind of make a statement and, and to um, generate new fans um, all around the world. So um, I don't take this lightly, and um, I, I'm putting, I'm trying to, I'm going to be putting my best foot forward and 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 bringing. Um, uh, my best performance of my career so far um, to Vegas. So uh, I, I can't wait for this fight. I know um, it's going to be a fight not just for um, j- not just to get the win, but you know it's a bit it's a big fight for um, for the division because it's five against six. Um, I, I get a win here, I'll be on a nine fight win streak, um, and I know there's not many guys on that kind of win streak in our division. So um, it's all right in front of me. Um, so come 2020, you know, I could be fighting for a title. So obviously not looking past Brandon at all, um, but I am ambitious and I know um, there's a lot of things in front of me that, that could be happening. So I just got to make sure that um, we execute this game plan and um, we get the job done. Well, yeah, I want to touch on it. Obviously, this is five versus six. Like, what do you think a win here does you in the division? Like, do you think that gets you right in that title conversation or puts you kind of that one fight away from fighting for the title? Yeah, definitely. I was in Melbourne with Henry Cejudo and uh, picking his brain. And, you know, we've got a good relationship being from the Ultimate Fighter, him being my coach. Um, he, he, he was pretty much telling me he wants to stay at Bantamweight. He can't keep cutting down the fly. So um, that pretty much opens up the door um, to, to fight for a title because uh, ahead of me, you know, there is um, Alexander Pantoja, um, Juicy Fomega, um, Figueroa, and then Benavides. So. A lot of them aren't on a big win streak or they're coming off losses. Um, and I know Benavides is probably the next one in line. So, um, yeah, we'll just see what happens. Take this fight, um, get get through Brandon and then see what kind of um, doors open uh, in the UFC, what they want to do. Uh, the UFC is coming back to my hometown next year, Auckland, February 23rd. And I'd love to be a part of that, um, fighting for a title or just, you know, fighting... Um, just another guy I, I'd love to just put on a show because it's been a while since I fought back home and um, that's always been um, a bucket list of mine so they've, uh, they've come twice and I've always missed out so um, hopefully you know this third time they come back uh, I'm a part of it Was this a card you wanted to be on? This is probably the biggest card they're going to do it's going to be your American debut like you fought twice in Australia and one China card like was this a goal for you to get on one of these big cards early on in your career? Yeah, definitely. Um, being in a gym where you know we have so much high level, high level guys that are um, doing so well, it was only destined for me to be a part of these big shows. Um, you know, if I wasn't on the Melbourne card in front of fifty seven thousand people, you know, this is the next best thing. Being on a big card like this in Vegas, um, so yeah, I, my my career so far has, has prepared me for these moments. This will be my thirty first professional fight, including my ultimate fighter fights. Um, so, you know, I've, I've fought in 13 different countries, um, being on the Ultimate Fighter as well, and living in Thailand for four years, which I was pretty much fighting every month. It's, it kind of um, 
got me used to the lifestyle and used to um, the quick turnarounds. I think my quickest turnaround I did was um, the last time the UFC came to Auckland, I fought three times in seven weeks, just the campaign to get on the card. So um, I, I fought with a lot of pressure on me and, and um, I found a way just to kind of not let that phase me and not and I just can uh, I just uh, focus on the things I can control and and that's the guy in front of me and and that's preparing the best I can um, ten weeks leading up to these fights so um, I'm coming in this fight you know for all this momentum um, at, from my my fight career and also uh, being inspired by all my teammates doing so well um, especially Izzy winning that title and being their front um, front row. Um, yeah, I'm definitely um, pretty motivated and um, just ready to kind of get in there. Now I'm just counting down the weeks. Uh, I could go this weekend if we had to. When are you going to fly to Vegas? Like, are you going a bit earlier to get accustomed to the different time zone? Yeah, so we go the week before, um, I think on the Saturday. So we'll be there for a, like a good seven days. Me and um, Alex together, we'll, we'll be flying together. Who's going to be in your corner? Is it going to be like Eugene? Is Brad Riddell going to go out there? Yep, Brad will be there. And um, probably my uh, wrestling coach, um, Andre. How much better is that having like Alex obviously on the card, but someone that's around your same size, you guys are kind of peaking at the same time in camp, where if it was like Izzy, you wouldn't be able to like, get that much work in. Yeah, exactly. It's a big asset to... Um to our camp and and we're we're pushing you know every day when we're at the gym he's the guy that's next to me pushing just as hard um so you know we can bounce off each other when we're on our having our off days or not feeling too um too good we can always pick each other back up and and um use that as um fuel so no it's um it's a big asset to have and (laughs) it's um one of those things at our gym it's a team effort so you know, guys have just fought, they come back um, and they give them their bodies back to us and, um, you know, we do the, um, the same for them. So, that's, but that makes it a unique um, atmosphere because there's no, um, I guess, off-season where you take, you know, two, three months off um, and then come back into the gym when you have a fight. It, it's kind of, um, you whatever you put in, you, you get back. So, that's why it never ends. The machine, the uh, like our, our fight team, is like a machine, you know, it just keeps turning along. When we get back from our fights from Vegas, we'll have, um, you know, a lot of the guys getting ready for the UFC Auckland card. So um, we'll be coming back and get uh, and helping them out and hopefully join them as well on that card. So um, that just makes it, you know, we're not never too complacent on, on what we have and we're not too, um, you know, settled on, you know, getting too comfortable on um, what we've done. So we've always... I guess been installed into us from our coaches just to kind of work towards the next goal and um, I feel like that 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 comes from um, Israel as well. I think after his his um, fight with Robert Whitaker, he had the belt for about two weeks and then he put it away. You know, now he's focused on the next thing. So um, it rubs off it rubs off on everyone and um, yeah, it's a great place to be. What do you think about this whole Jones and Adesanya going back and forth? I think Adesanya is like so far in Jones's head right now because Jones tweeted he's like I'm not tweeting it to you till 2021 and then like two hours later he tweeted at him again yeah it's definitely um you know it's 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 so um <clears throat> it's so easy to see that he's definitely got under his skin and um it, it, it's gonna be a fight that has to happen you know um Israel is just kind of waiting getting a bit more experience um in these big title fights and then when he's ready, um, the, they'll probably announce that fight. But, um, yeah, I, I would love to see it, you know. Uh, Jones will definitely be fighting with emotion, um, and that, that will make for an interesting matchup. He is um, a lot bigger. or well, not a lot bigger, but he is, um, you know, longer and, and taller, um, which will make Israel, you know, rely more on his technique and, and um, strategy. But, um, yeah, I can't wait to watch that fight, and it's definitely a fight on the pipeline. And just a couple more questions. Obviously, they're going back to Auckland. Is the goal, get this win, be on that card? Because I think they could easily do, like, Hooker as the main and you as the co-main on that card, and that would be huge in Auckland. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
like we said, like I said before, I don't. I'm not going to um, look past this fight on UFC 245, and and that's all I'm thinking about right now. But ideally, you know, I'll get a quick turnaround or quickish turnaround, ten weeks um, apart from each other, um, and get on that Auckland card. But um, who I'd be fighting, I don't know yet. It's just kind of. You know, let's let's just get through this fight and then go from there. But um, you know, if everything goes well and everything um, works out, um, definitely be a part of that card. I'd love to. I haven't been able to fight on the same card as Dan um, in the UFC yet, but you know, we've fought on a lot of cards together. So um, I've been training with him ever since I first started MMA or mixed martial arts back in two thousand and um, two thousand and eight when I first started. So. Um, yeah, we've been training since day one, so it's, it'll be awesome to um, be on the same card as um, as him and see him headline it finally. Well, thank you so much for doing this, Kai. I really appreciate it, because that's all I got for you. No, no worries, bro. Appreciate your time as well. Yeah, have a good day. Cheers, bro. Bye. Bye.